Middle class was being hammered long before the financial crisis. Yeah. 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 The economy has changed. The technology made us more productive, but it also made a lot of good jobs obsolete. Global trade brought us cheaper products, but it also allowed companies to move and hire people in low-wage countries. American workers saw the paycheck squeeze, even as corporate profits were rising, CEO salaries exploded. The guaranteed security of pensions and health care started slowly to disappear. These fundamental changes in the economy, the rise of technology and global competition, these changes are real. We can't wish away these challenges. But here's what I've known about it. We can meet these challenges. This is America. We've got the world's best workers and the world's best entrepreneurs. And the world's best researchers. We've got the best colleges and the best universities. And we've got the most innovative spirit. We've got everything we need to thrive in this new 21st century economy. And there's not a country on earth that would not gladly trade places with the United States. Yeah. 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 We've got a choice to make. If we're going to realize that promise, if we're going to make sure that that success is there for the next generation, in five days we will choose our next question. parties. You're going to be making the choice between two fundamentally different visions in America. On one hand, we've got folks who are arguing to return to the top-down policy and crash our economy. What we're talking about is a future that's built on a strong and growing middle class. We know the choice that needs to be made. And we're here today because we believe and if this country invests in the skills and ideas of its people, then good jobs and businesses will follow. We believe that America's free market has been the engine of America's progress, driven by risk takers and innovators and dreamers, folks in Nevada know about dreaming. But we also understand that in this country, people succeed when they've got a shot at good education. And they have a chance to learn their skills. And by the way, businesses benefit because they're hiring those workers. And some of those workers end up starting businesses of their own. We believe that, we, that when we support research into medical breakthroughs, research into new technology, entire new industries will start and stay and hire you. We don't believe government should focus nose on everything we do, but we do believe this country is stronger when there are rules to protect our kids from toxic dumping. Mercury pollution. When there are rules to protect consumers from unscrupulous credit card companies and mortgage lenders. We believe we grow faster when our tax code rewards hard work and companies that create jobs here in America. And we believe in quality health care for everybody. And dignified retirement for everybody aren't just achievable goals, they are a measure of our values as a nation. That's what we believe. You know, for eight years, we had a president who shared these beliefs. His name was Bill Clinton. And when he was elected, he asked, well, to pay a little more so we can reduce the deficit and still make investments in things like education, training, and science, and research. And, and, he, and here, here, here's an interesting thing. Plenty of folks who were running for Congress at the time said it would hurt the economy. And the, 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 the raising taxes on the wealthy would, would kill jobs. And if that argument sounds familiar, one of those candidates who was running back then happens to be the guy who's running for president right now. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Woo! Second term, America created 25 million new jobs. Yeah. Incomes were up, poverty was down, our deficit became the biggest surplus in history. 
So no matter we know our ideas work, we also know the ideas that don't work. Because we eight years after Bill Clinton left office, his policies were reversed. The wealthiest Americans got tax cuts they didn't need and we couldn't afford. Companies enjoy tax breaks for shipping jobs overseas. Insurance companies and all companies in Wall Street were given free license to do whatever they please. Folks at the top got to play by a different set of rules than the rest of us. And the result of this top down economics was all of these jobs, record deficits, the slowest job growth in half a century, and an economic crisis that we're still cleaning up after. So in the closing weeks of this campaign, Governor Romney's been using all his talents as a salesman to dress up the very same policies that failed our country so bad. The very same policies we've been cleaning up after over these last four years. And with a straight face, he's offering them up as change. He's saying he's the candidate of change. Now, let me tell you, Nevada, we know what change looks like. And what the governor's offering sure ain't change. Giving more power back to the bank, to the biggest banks is change. Leaving millions without health insurance isn't change. Another $5 trillion tax cut that favors the wealthy isn't change. Refusing to answer questions about the details of your policies isn't change. Turning Medicare into a voucher, that is change, but we don't want that change. <laughs> Ruling out compromise by pledging a rubber stamp the Tea Party's agenda as president, that's definitely not change. Don't move. <laughs> that, that's, that's exactly the attitude of Washington that needs to go. So after, after four years as president, you know me by now. Not made. You may be frustrated at the pace of change, but you know what I believe. You know where I stand. You know I'm willing to make tough decisions, even when they're not politically convenient. And you know that I will fight for you and your families every single day. Some of the 
of the businesses we encourage will fail, but I promise you this. There is a future for manufacturing in America. There's a future for clean energy in America. I don't want to see that future in other countries. I don't want to tax those reward companies for creating jobs overseas. I want to reward companies to create jobs right here in the United States.